Hi there, and welcome to the first video tutorial for Texture Paint Champ. Texture Paint Champ allows you to paint directly over a material on a static mesh within the UE5 editor and update the textures of that material. This can be done an unlimited amount of times and you can change or modify the look of an object with no additional performance cost. This is because we aren't changing the material, we're just repainting the textures that the material uses. This also allows us to work with almost any material type as we aren't editing the material itself. In this first video, we're going to go through the setup process. So let's get started. To ensure Texture Paint Champ works, we need to go to our project settings. In the search bar at the top, type UV. Under optimization, you will see support UV from hit to results. We want to ensure this is true. If it's not, make it true. After that, we will go to our Texture Paint Champ folder. In there, we'll see some subfolders and a level. We want to open this level. In this level, you will see a red marker on the ground. This indicates both the position we should place our static mesh as well as the direction it should be facing. Now, this isn't essential, but we have multiple lighting setups around this focal point. And this allows us to view our static mesh under different lighting conditions. We will need to place our static mesh in the level. We can simply drag and drop it in. Once in the level, we're going to rotate it and position it around our marker. If we want to paint the materials on a skeletal mesh, we can simply open the skeletal mesh and we'll see an option at the top to make a static mesh copy of it. We can then save a copy of it and drag that into our scene and paint the materials on the static mesh instead. Of course, then we can reapply those materials back onto our skeletal mesh. With our static mesh now in the scene, we're going to go to the outliner and select TPC underscore master. This is where we will set everything up for painting. First, we will select our static mesh to paint. The reason we select this is so we can have other meshes in the scene that we may want as reference objects. Now we've selected our static mesh, we will see that it's pulled the mesh in as a reference, and it's also telling us any materials it's finding on that mesh. In this case, there's only one material. Some objects may have multiple materials. When multiple materials are found on a static mesh, we will see all materials available in the static mesh materials array. We can then declare which material we would like to paint over using the target index. The actual material we will be painting over is then declared under target material. As our sofa only has one material, we will leave our target material index as zero, as it's the only available element of the array. From our target material, Texture Paint Champ will extract any texture parameters. In order for this to work, our target material must be a material instance and it must contain texture parameters, not texture samples. There are two ways to input the paint textures that we will use to paint over our static mesh. The first method is to use a material instance that contains texture parameters. This will automatically populate the paint textures array with the relevant names and corresponding texture. The second method is to manually add the textures instead of using a material. We can do this by adding to the paint textures array. We'll want to use common names. This will help us later when we come to mapping our textures. we can optionally add a height map texture. Although it shows as an array, we should only add a single entry. 
We can drag any height map texture in here, although typically we would take a height map from our target texture that comes from the static mesh we're painting. This would be typical, for example, if we had a wall and we wanted to paint as a priority in between the bricks on the cement. Some height maps may be channel packed and they may only sit in a single channel on a texture. If this is the case, you can select the corresponding channel that the height map exists within. If the entire texture is a height map, you can leave this as RGB. Now that we've declared our target textures and our paint textures, we need to tell Texture Paint Champ how to map them. For example, our albedo from our paint texture should be painted over our albedo from our target texture. We have the ability to try and auto map our textures. But before we do that, we're going to go through the process manually, as we will always want to check that auto mapping has worked properly. If we look at our texture mapping array and go to the first element, we can see that it's pulling in a target texture named normal. We then need to declare which texture type this is. For albedo and normal maps, we need to specially declare them. This is because Texture Paint Champ treats them slightly differently to other maps. So in this case, as it's normal, we will declare it as a normal. We then need to give it the corresponding name for the texture that will paint over this normal map. We can see from our paint textures, we also have a normal map. We can either just write this name or copy and paste it. When mapping manually, do not paint will be set to true. So by default, this will not paint over the normal map. So we would need to turn that off. Our next texture is a roughness map. We do want to paint on roughness as we have a corresponding paint roughness. So we can copy that, drop that into our paint texture. As roughness isn't albedo or normal, we're fine to leave that as other, but we do want to paint it, so we would turn off do not paint. Our albedo map is also a special map, and we need to declare that as an albedo map. We also need to give it the corresponding name. In this case, our paint texture is also called albedo. So we drop that in there, and we would also want to paint it. Our target texture has a metallic map, but we do not want to paint that as we do not have a corresponding metallic map to paint over. Therefore, we're going to leave that as do not paint. The same applies to the mask. We do not want to paint over the mask, so we will leave that as it is. If we turn on Try Auto Map, Texture Paint Champ will try and map our textures for us. We can see here that it's correctly identified the target texture normal as a texture type normal and also brought in the correct name for our paint textured normal map too. It's also assuming we would want to paint this normal over the target texture normal as therefore turned off do not paint. It's also correctly identified roughness as another type of texture and albedo as an albedo diffuse texture. And in both cases, as it's found matching maps, it's also going to paint them. For metallic and for masks, it's not going to paint them as it's not found corresponding maps, so assumes we do not want to paint over them. You may notice there are some other items in our mapping structure that we've not covered. These are related to channel packing, and we will go through the various types of channel packing now. So far, we've only covered mapping a single texture to a single texture. But there are actually four combinations we may come across. We may want to paint a single texture into a channel within a pack texture. We may want to paint a channel within a pack texture over a single texture. And we may want to paint channels within a pack texture into other channels in another pack texture. In this example, we'll look at a single texture that we want to paint into a packed texture. Our target material here has a texture called DR. D means displacement in the red channel and roughness in the green channel. 
This is a pack texture, however our roughness is a single texture, which we will want to paint over the green channel in our DR texture. Our auto mapping is set up to handle situations like this, so we can check to see if it's done it correctly. If we identify our DR texture, we can see that the texture type is correctly identified as other, but it has no longer added a paint texture name. Instead, we can see it's added a map element to the paint texture green. This is saying take the green channel from the roughness single texture and paint into the green channel of the DR texture where we know roughness resides. It actually doesn't matter when it's a single texture which channel we paint from because a single channel roughness will actually have the same texture in the red, green and blue channel. But what is important is that we only paint to the green channel of the DR texture because we know that's where our roughness map is in the pack texture. Let's take an example of painting a patch channel into a single channel. We can see here in our paint textures, we have an odd pack texture. This means that ambient occlusion is in the red channel, roughness is in the green channel, and displacement or height is in the blue channel. If we look at our target textures, we have a roughness single texture. If we go down to our mapping and we identify our single texture roughness channel, we can see we have a similar setup to the previous example. In this case, we want to paint over our roughness channel, but we want to take just the roughness green channel from our paint texture. So in this example, it's really important that we have our arch channel sat under the paint texture green, so it knows to pull just this middle green channel where roughness sits. However, we want to paint over the entire texture of the roughness channel as it's a single texture. So we can leave that as RGB, as this will then paint the roughness into all of the texture and all of the channels. Finally, let's look at mapping two packed textures. In this example, we can see our target textures has a DR texture. This has displacement in the red channel and roughness in the green channel. However, our paint textures uses an ARD texture. This has ambient occlusion in the red channel, roughness in the green channel, and displacement in the blue channel. Our auto map has correctly set this up, but let's take a look at what's happening. We are pulling the green channel from our ARD texture, which we know is roughness, and we are painting that and mapping that to the green channel of our DR target texture, which we also know is roughness. So this is set up correctly. We're also pulling the blue channel from our ARD texture, which we know is displacement, and we are mapping that and painting that to the red channel of the DR target texture, which is also displacement. So again, we can see these channels are correctly set up to paint the correct paint texture onto the correct target texture. There may be times when you have an underlying target texture that you don't want where you paint, but you don't have a paint texture to override it. In this example, I have a sphere with a metallic hexagon pattern on it. If I try and paint over it, We can see that the hexagonal pattern still comes through. This is because it's coming from the metallic texture. A solution to this is to add my own metallic texture using a simple white texture. So I add an element to my paint textures. If I go to Texture Paint Champ folder, there is a textures folder in there and there is a simple white 2K material. I can drag that in and call it metallic. Then I can check it's mapped properly as my auto map is on, which it has. Now when I paint over my sphere, we can see that the hexagonal pattern has disappeared. This is because I'm now painting over the metallic texture with my new simple white texture that I just added. In the reverse instance, if you have a paint texture 
but no matching target texture, you can simply just add that texture parameter to your target material. Finally, before we start painting, we'll want to ensure that our error check does not find any issues. You can refer to this through the setup process if you're having issues, as it will look for common mistakes and it will flag them here. This can be found at the bottom of the Texture Paint Champ setup section. So as long as there are no issues found, we should be good to start painting. This covers the process for setting up Texture Paint Champ. In the next video, we'll go through how to actually paint the static mesh and all of the brush options and tools available.